Hey guys, I'm sorry I can't be there today. I hope you are all doing well and you have a fantastic Wednesday. If you haven't already, go ahead and open up your HIV AIDS notes online and we will go ahead and get started. So online friends, please make sure your cameras are on and be taking really good notes. All right, so HIV is known as the human immunodeficiency virus. H for human means it only infects human beings. This is not something that can be transmitted by mosquitoes or mosquito bites. Your dog can't give it to you. Your cat can't give it to you. It only comes from direct contact with another human being. I means immunodeficiency virus. An immunodeficiency virus is a virus that weakens the immune system and increases the risk of infection. So our immune system is like our white blood cells. That is the part of our body that is responsible for going around and killing all of the bad cells, bad viruses, germs, anything in our body that's not supposed to be there and our body recognizes as unhealthy or foreign. So your immune system is really important. If you have ever heard of someone saying like, take vitamin C to boost your immune system, it's just all of your white blood cells fighting together to fight off things in your body that are not supposed to be there. So this virus specifically attacks your body's immune system. And V for virus, a virus is any outside agent that comes in and attacks the body. So human immunodeficiency virus, or a human virus that attacks the immune system or our body. Then we have AIDS. Now, AIDS is not a separate disease from HIV. It is end-stage AIDS. So if you've heard of like end-stage breast cancer or end-stage liver cancer. It just means like the final stage or the stage right before death. AIDS is just a stage in someone's HIV journey, okay? It's the stage that you get right before someone has passed away when HIV takes over the body. So it's not a separate disease. It's HIV. It's just the last stage of HIV, so AIDS is Acquired Immune Deficient Deficiency Syndrome. A is acquired, meaning you get it from a choice or something that happens to you. It's not something that is inherited. So things like your eye color, your hair color, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, things like Down syndrome, all of those things are inherited traits or things that happen to you at birth. Acquired means you get it from your lifestyle or your environment. So it's not something that you get just from birth, although you you can get it from birth from mom, but it's not something that's genetically passed on. It's, it's something that happened to you because of a lifestyle choice. I means immune, meaning it weakens the immune system. Remember, that's the system of our body that fights all of our germs. D, it creates a deficiency of CD4 plus cells in the immune system. So our CD4 plus cells are, they go along with our helper T cells. CD4 plus cells are specific cells in our immune system that fight really strong viruses. So they have a very important role. And then S is syndrome, or it's a group of illnesses taking place at one time. So when we think of like a flu virus, when we have the flu, we typically just have the flu. When we have a cold, we typically just have a cold. Um, when we get an ear infection, typically it's just our ear that is getting infected. So those types of things are what we call singular viruses. It's just when one thing is happening and then 
like with a syndrome, it's a bunch of different things happening. So someone does have HIV, they usually get a secondary infection. We'll talk about what some of those secondary infections are. Um, and usually they have more than one of those happening at a time. So they have lots of different illnesses all going on at the same time. Um, so again, those CD4 plus cells decrease, the HIV level in our body increases, and we have a bunch of different things going wrong all at the same time. Okay, so how many people actually get infected with HIV? So in 2017, roughly 39,000 people received an HIV diagnosis in the U.S. The annual number of new HIV diagnoses remained stable between 2012 and 2016. So what that means is roughly the same number of people for every year between 2012 and 2016. So 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015, and 2016. Roughly the same number of people all happened to get HIV. So it's about the same. So this chart down here looks at different populations and who is affected with HIV the most. So remember when we talked about health disparities, when we looked at different populations getting different diseases. Um, we looked at COVID-19 when we talked about it at the beginning of the year. This is another example of those health disparities. So in this particular case in 2017, male um, African Americans with male to male sexual contact had the highest number of HIV cases. Male to male Hispanic and Latinos were second with roughly 7,500 cases. Caucasian male to male was the third highest with just under 7,000 cases. Black women in a heterosexual or meaning woman and male relationship had roughly 4,000 cases. Af uh, black men with a male and woman contact had roughly 1,700 cases. Hispanic and Latina women in male and female relationships had just over a thousand and Caucasian women with a male and female relationship had right around a thousand cases. So definitely we can tell um, that there's a huge health disparity between black male to male sexual contacts and Caucasian women in heterosexual relationships. That's almost guys 10 times the amount of HIV patients between the two of them. So when we're looking at a health disparity, we definitely would notice that this is a huge problem because we have almost 10 times the amount of people. When we're looking to get rid of that health disparity, all of these numbers would be pretty even. So like Hispanic, Latino, male to males compared to Caucasian male to males, those are within 500, that's pretty close. So we would wanna see all of those numbers roughly within a couple hundred of each other when we're looking at a number this big. But in this case, it's almost 10 times the difference. So definitely a health disparity there. Okay, um, what is kind of the difference between HIV and AIDS? Remember, it's the same disease, AIDS is HIV. When the immune system becomes weakened by HIV, the illness progresses to AIDS. Again, AIDS is just end stage or end of life stage HIV. Some blood tests, symptoms, or certain infections, those are those secondary infections, indicate progression of HIV to AIDS. And we'll talk at the end specifically what those different secondary infections are. We have two main types of HIV. We have HIV-1 and we have HIV-2. HIV-1 and HIV-2 are both transmitted through the same routes. 
they are associated with similar opportunistic infections. Opportunistic infections is just another way to say those secondary infections we get when we have AIDS. So whether you have HIV type 1 or if you have HIV type 2, you're going to get, it's possible to get it the same way. And those opportunistic infections that we die from with HIV are both the same no matter which type that you get. HIV-1 is more common worldwide. HIV-2 is found in West Africa, Mozambique, and Angola. So when we talk about HIV in the United States, and for this purpose for our health class, we're going to be referring to HIV-1. We're not going to be referring to HIV-2 because it doesn't affect the U.S. population. So we're just going to talk about HIV-1. HIV-2 is less easily transmitted. It's less pathogenic, meaning it has like less symptoms. And the duration of an HIV-2 infection is shorter. So people die from that quicker. Just a couple of differences between HIV-1 and HIV-2. Okay, how is HIV transmitted? So how are you able to get HIV? Number one is direct contact with infected blood. So HIV is a blood virus, even though it's a sexually transmitted disease, it is found in human blood and other bodily fluids as well. But it, that would mean like if someone got a cut and they bled on you into your cut and they had HIV, it is possible for you to get HIV that way. If you were to ingest someone's blood, if you were to get poked by someone who had blood on it, any way that someone else's blood gets into your system is a possible route of transmission. Okay, number two is sexual contact. Doesn't matter what type of sexual contact you have, any type of sexual intercourse can transmit HIV. Direct contact with semen or vaginal and cervical secretions, so sexual fluids transmit HIV. And HIV mothers are able to transmit it during pregnancy, delivery, or breastfeeding. The great news is mamas who are known to be HIV positive, there are medications out there that are highly effective at preventing transmission during pregnancy and delivery. We also know that mamas who are HIV infected need to formula feed rather than breastfeed because breast milk does transmit HIV. So there are lots of things that we can do for mamas who are pregnant and have HIV to prevent their babies from getting it. Okay, HIV is not transmitted by, and these are really important to know, guys, because there is a lot of myths out there. There is a lot of um, scared people out there who aren't properly educated and think HIV is able to be transmitted in ways that aren't necessarily true. Remember how we talked about um, certain STDs not being transmitted on a toilet seat? Same kind of thing. So, um, HIV is not transmitted by coughing. So if someone coughs on you with HIV, you're not going to catch HIV. You're not going to get it from someone sneezing. You're not going to get it from an in insect bite. Remember, it's a human immunodeficiency virus. So only humans can transmit it. Touching or hugging. So you can go up to someone who has HIV, give them a big old hug, give them a handshake, um, you know, sit next to them, whatever, you're not going to get HIV that way. Water or food, okay? So, you know, it doesn't transmit due to water or food. Kissing, okay, if you kiss someone with HIV, you're not going to get HIV. Public showers, handshakes, work or school conduct. So if you work with someone who has HIV, if you go to school with someone who has HIV, you're not going to be getting it from being around someone, okay? HIV is not COVID. It's not a six-foot rule. It's not wear a mask rule, okay? This is bodily fluids being transmitted. It's not sitting next to someone. Using phones, so you can share a cell phone with someone, 
or sharing cups, plates, utensils, etc., straws, anything like that. So if you eat or drink after someone who has HIV, you're not going to get HIV. And this is just really important because we want to spread truth. We don't want to spread myths. We want people to understand how HIV is transmitted, what contact is needing to be done, um, because wrong information leads to biases and it leads to more issues than what we really need. So learning proper methods of transmission, what really happens and how it spreads is really important. Okay. HIV is only transmissible by bodily fluids, okay? These fluids must come into contact with a mucous membrane. So mucous membranes we talked about are our face, and um, they're also found in our bottom, our mouth, and our sexual organs. They also can come in contact with damaged tissue. So that would be something like a cut, a scrape, an open scab, anything where you have an opening in your skin directly um, into your bloodstream. It also can be directly injected into the bloodstream from a needle or a syringe for, trans for transmission to occur. So remember when we talked about um, ear piercings, tattoos, or shooting drugs? Um, if that needle is not properly sanitized or it's been used on an HIV patient before you and not properly sanitized, it is highly likely that that disease can get transmitted. Um, there's different risks, different levels, but it is possible. So anytime you go to get your ears pierced, if you go to get a tattoo, um, anything like that, make sure that they use and you see them use a freshly opened, just for you, sterilized needle, okay? If they are not willing to show you that it was sterilized and they're not willing to show you that they opened it right in front of you, those are danger signs you need to run away, okay? Nothing wrong with those things. Just make sure that that company is following proper procedure. So how can we prevent the transmission of HIV? So we have come up with, as a developing society, things that we can do in order to prevent transmission, so we have developed screening processes for all blood and blood products. So when people go to donate blood, you've probably heard of like blood drives. Maybe you've done a blood drive. I don't know if any of you are old enough necessarily. Maybe your parents have or you know of someone who has. When you go to give blood, your blood has to get screened before you are allowed to donate. They test for HIV, they test your blood sugar, your iron level. They want to make sure that the blood that you're giving is safe. So they do kind of like a pre-test before you give blood. And then they also go and they test the blood after you've donated it to make sure that it's not infected. So blood is definitely a bodily fluid that transmits STDs, specifically HIV, so that blood gets thoroughly screened. We used to not do that, and a lot of people were getting HIV and other diseases from blood products because they weren't scanned. Number two is following universal precautions. So things like wearing a mask, wearing goggles, wearing a face shield, or wearing gloves whenever we're treating someone with an opened wound. So that blood or those bodily fluids are not getting in our skin or in our mucous membranes um, or in our mouth. That's why when you go to the dentist, they wear a mask or a shield and glasses. So nothing like, especially when they're brushing or, you know, like cleaning your teeth and blood comes out of your gums. Um, so that doesn't spit up into their face and they contract anything. We're educating in safer sex practices, using precautions. We're using prevention methods, you know, learning um, how that disease is spread sexually so we can make smarter lifestyle choices. We're identifying and treating other STIs and other infections. Anytime we have an STI or another infection, our immune system is weakened. So if we come in contact with HIV, the chances of us getting it are much higher. So we've definitely learned a lot about that. We also can screen earlier. And then provide referral and treatment 
for drug dependence. Definitely someone who is on drugs is more likely to contract it, particularly drug users who are using intravenous drugs. Um, so making sure that we provide that treatment so they can get off the drugs, they're not sharing needles, and it lowers their chance of having HIV or AIDS. Okay, so this is kind of how HIV works. So this top dark black line is our CD4 plus T helper cells. And then the gray line below it is our viral load or the amount of HIV in our body. Okay, so CD4 plus cells are a part of our immune system and they're a special type of white blood cell. White blood cells also protect the body from infections. CD4 plus cells are called T lymphocytes, T cells, or T helper cells. But the body continues to produce new CD4 plus cells all of the time. Um, you use a little bit of them when you're fighting like a cold or a flu, maybe an ear infection, um, but the body replenishes those. So what happens in HIV is our body produces CD4 plus cells, but the HIV cells are like Pac-Man and they grow and they eat and destroy all of those CD4 plus cells. And eventually the amount of HIV is higher than the amount of CD4 plus cells. And that's when the disease progresses. Okay, so this first little hump is an acute infection. So more than half of HIV infected individuals experience flu-like symptoms during this stage of infection, also called a seroconversion illness. So if you're drawing this chart on your notes, what I want you to put at this first hump is called seroconversion. So this is kind of like that initial um, symptoms of HIV. So like when you get um, a flu, so what happens? Like your stomach might hurt, you get a fever, you get a stuffy nose, you get a sore throat. Like you know you're not feeling well. That's the same thing with this. So that's called seroconversion, the first onset of symptoms. We know that the HIV viral load, look how far it shoots up, guys. Okay, because our body is not reacting to it yet. It's never seen these kind of cells before. So our body gets really sick. And so our CD4 plus cells drop because what are they doing? Those CD4 plus cells are going and attacking the HIV, right? Okay, well, that doesn't last for very long. Our body recognizes it. And just like how we would have a flu, those CD4 plus cells go to work. They fight that flu virus. CD4 plus cells go up, flu cells go down. Same thing happens with HIV. So our immune system works to remove the virus from the blood. Those CD4 plus cells go to work. The HIV goes down, so this is in the middle where the black line is really high and the gray line is really low. The immune system helps to reduce viral load for a period of time, but replication is consistent. So HIV viruses are constantly replicating and they are replicating at an incredibly fast rate, guys. It's like billions of copies almost all of the time. So as long as our CD4 plus cells are being copied faster than the HIV cells, the black line stays high and the gray line stays low. Unfortunately, though, that's not what happens, okay? When people go on HIV medication, it's to keep that black line really high and that gray line really low. We want that viral load to stay really low or what we call undetectable, meaning we can't find any copies of it in our body, all right? We want that CD4 to be high and that viral load to be low. All right, on the right-hand side, where the gray line and the black line meet, that's when we get those opportunistic infections or those secondary infections, okay? That's when our viral load is increasing, our CD4 plus count is decreasing, 
and the HIV is starting to take over our body. And then on the far right where the gray line is below the black line, that is AIDS, all right? So our viral load is higher than our CD4 plus count load. So this is kind of how HIV works. Again, we have that first time seroconversion. Our body recognizes it, so the viral load drops. The CD4 plus count recovers and goes back up. Eventually, they meet. We have opportunistic infections. Then the HIV load goes high. The CD4 plus count load goes low, and we get AIDS. Okay, so we have four words. We have seroconversion, asymptomatic, symptomatic, and AIDS. All right, we're going to take those four words and we're going to put them back on our chart. All right, so this first time here, that's where you're going to write seroconversion, all right? That's when we first see those onset number of the, of the virus. We get those flu-like symptoms. That's seroconversion. All right, in the middle where the black line is really high and the gray line is really low, that's asymptomatic, meaning we're not seeing any symptoms. Why would we not be seeing any symptoms? Okay, if your answer is because our viral load is low and our CD4 plus count is high, you're exactly right. Our body is fighting that virus. And we're not witnessing any symptoms because our body's doing what it should. So we're going to write asymptomatic right there. Okay. Where the two lines cross, that's where I want you to write symptomatic. We're starting to get those opportunistic infections. We're starting to see the symptoms of the HIV virus again. So where those two lines cross, you're going to write symptomatic. And then on the far right side, that very far edge where it has the gray line high and the black line low, that's where I want you to write AIDS. Okay? So seroconversion, asymptomatic, symptomatic, and AIDS. Okay, so seroconversion, remember that's that first hump. It's infection with HIV and antibodies develop. So antibodies are white blood cells that your body produces that they recognize that this is a foreign virus. They start making a bunch of copies and they go and they try to attack that virus with our CD4+. Plus count, okay? If you have ever gotten a vaccine, you have gotten antibodies for that particular disease. So like if you get your flu shot, you get antibodies for the flu. If you got a tetanus shot, you got antibodies for tetanus, all right? So your body kind of creates its own little vaccine against that virus. Asymptomatic, so there are no signs of HIV. The immune system controls virus production. So the CD4 plus cells are being produced at a faster rate than the virus, which is a good thing, okay? That's when we want people to be taking their HIV medication because that medication keeps that viral load really low and helps that CD4 plus count stay really, really high. Symptomatic, where those two lines crossed. We see physical signs of HIV infection and we see some immune suppression, Okay. That's when we're starting to see that viral load go up, that CD4 plus count stay really, um, start, is starting to drop. And then AIDS, that's when we have those opportunistic infections and it's the end stage of the disease. All right, guys, we are gonna end our presentation today. Um, go ahead, you can have the rest of the class period. I'd like for you to study. I want you to go over your notes, remember, you're going to have a test over this. Um, it's probably going to be not, it'll probably be right after we get back from Thanksgiving. So, or maybe a little bit after that. So go ahead and get started um, with studying now. So you can have the rest of the class period to study and get caught up on everything. Make sure all your notes are finished and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.